They should only be Yomtif. An egg that's laid on Yomtif. Beishami Yom Teochil. Beishami says you permitted to eat the egg, although it's laid on Yomtif. We'll see, although before it was laid, it, he wasn't even aware that it existed. And even if he was aware, it was something which didn't exist as an egg, because when it's in the chicken, it's what? It's part of the chicken. Beishalomrim Lo Seochil. Beishal says you're not permitted to eat it. Of course, it's Muktza, we'll say, the Mars can discuss a concept known as Nolat. There's Muktza and there's Nolat. Okay? Nola means it didn't exist and came into existence. It's a more extreme case of Muktza. Because the Mars is going to want to differentiate that maybe even if you hold, you don't know the Muktza, you're in a linear Muktza, but in regard to Nolat, you would agree that it's not going to be permitted because mm-hmm. it's extreme. And the Mars is going to come out and say, Beishamai, just as he doesn't hold the Muktza, he doesn't hold of Nolat. Although it's a more extreme case of Muktzah. And Beis Hillel, not only does he not hold of Nolad, which is more extreme, he right. of Muktzah. We'll see. So Beis Hillel be on to Bishami Omrim Teochil. So Beis Hillel be on Teochil. Okay, so Rashi says, look Teochil when? Bo be on. Meaning on Yom Tev. Muktzah Yom Tev, of course you're permitted. Morim for Shtaimo. Beis Shami Omrim Sobrich Zayis. Beisilla says, Beishamai says, Sora to be in violation of Bal Yura Bal Yimotze. Bal Yura Bal Yimotze. You're not permitted to possess Chomets. If it's Sora, if it's yeast, even if you have as little as a Kazayas. Right? So, the Chomets, the Chsevis. But if it's Chomets, Sora is yeast. Yeast is inedible. So that's when, that's the lesser share. But if it's Chomets edible, it's the size of a large date. So Beishillel, Beishamai, Throughout Shas is usually the more machmir shita, and Bishil is the more makil. The reason why we're saying, well, this has no relevance to our discussion here, we, we're listing all the cases, these are the, the, the three exceptions where Bishilel is l'chumra and Bishama is, l'ch- is l'kula. So, Chomet is l'chsevis, Bishil is l'chsevis, Bishil is l'chsevis. The both, we're strict on both, whether it's sore, if you possession of sore, because I see in violation by Yerob, by Yimotzei, or Chomet, which is edible, which is less. Intense as sour as yeast, if you have a gzayish in violation of possessing chomets, even a gzayish. Hashochet chayv of biyomtif. Now the halach is, there's a chiv kisi adam. If you slaughter an undomesticated animal or a bird, you, you have to cover the blood. So if you slaughter, shochayv of biyomtif, shame omrim, and let's say he didn't prepare earth. He didn't prepare earth before yomtif. So the question is, but he has a shovel in a pile of dirt. Which tomorrow is going to discuss. So Beishamai says, Yach bedek v'yachase. You permitted to dig with a spade. It's not a regular case of digging. And you cover the blood. Beishalomrim lo yishchot. You're not even initially permitted to slaughter. You're only allowed to slaughter if you have the, if you have the earth prepared. Elam ked ha'yilo of a muhan mibol yom. Unless he had dirt prepared from before yom tif. He's not, we don't, on yom tif, although shechit is permitted. Why is it permitted? Because it's ochel nefesh. Right? But if you don't have the earth prepared, to do the mitzvah of, of, of Kisu, afterwards we don't let you slaughter. Umodim, however, Beishama, Beishilel, concurs with Shim Shochad, if post facto he did slaughter, okay. so there's, there's an imminent chiyuv of Kisi Adam, Shiyach Videk Vichase. We're talking about, see, we'll see the Gemara. He then, we're talking about with a spade already, he's in, in the dirt, he's permitted to cover, to cover it. Then it says, Shefa Kiru Mukhano. In addition, if he has afer of an of a, of a oven, yeah. Which, it, which is prepared, because that's, it's really no lot. If you put wood in, the, in an oven and you burn it, the ash is no lot, no right? Lot. Because when you began it was wood, also now it's ash, it's a new entity. Nevertheless, if, if it's muhan, you can per- be permitted to use it. Let's see Rashi. The way we're going to do it. We're going to go to the Mishnah. Rashi, toast it, then we're going to review the Mishnah again. Okay. As a review. Why are these other cases listed? Because these cases are three cases with Beishamai, the leniencies of Beishamai, and the stringencies of Beishelel. Therefore, he, he classifies them. He puts them all together, learns them together. Mark goes to explain each one of these, why Beishel is Mekel, Beishamai is Mekel, Beishelel is Mekel. What is Kosevis? 
to be Vaileshma Yoruba Yimotse, you have to have the Chomets, which is edible, has to be as large as a date. Rashi says Tamra. is a date. Yahweh Deke, what's a Deke? Filo Belaz. Filo means a spade. Modim Shim Shochat, but if actually he already did the Shechito, Kim Forish Time Migmoro, Keshel Deke notes Bodyom, and that's bad, he just says a heap of earth. There's a shovel already in the heap of earth, so therefore, therefore it's semi prepared. Mm. It's semi prepared. Shevikir Muchanu, Moraboy, my comer. What does this have to do with what was discussed earlier? We'll see the Gemara. Tosis, top Tosis. Now, the question is, what it should say, is it permitted, not permitted? That, that, you know, something. Is it kosher, is it not kosher? Is it mutter, is it osir? What are we speaking specifically eating? Right? Te'ochel, no te'ochel. Let's tell us, Vim Tomer, Amay lo tono osin v'atirin. Be'shamay, be'sil is osrin, and be'sil amatirin. They prohibit it, they permit it. If it's permitted, it's permitted in everything. It's forbidden, it's forbidden in everything. What does he have to say specifically in terms of consumption? We start a Beya. Okay? Maybe you won't say because Osir is mashba even beyond Yom Tov, it's going to be Osir. Zeno, it's incorrect. The word Osir is no connotation forever. Why? The Amid al Kamon, the Gemara says later, Efroach Shnol to be Yom Tov. It says if you have a chick later in Yom Tov, Osir. And what does also mean over there? Hainu biyomo. It means on Yom Tif. It doesn't mean beyond Yom Tif. So just over there it says also. So why it doesn't say regarding the egg? Osrin. Osrin matirin. We'll get back to the mission in a second. Vo damrinon mosi shem shebenayr. If you have, you light a candle, let's say, Erev Yom Tif. Erev Shabbos. Okay. And now the, the candle burns out. The residue of oil that's left in the candle, are you permitted to use it? Is it mukta not mukta? It says mosi shem shebenayr. Rebuda osir. Regulus says you're not permitted to. He prohibits it. Bainu daf kabosiyom. There's not even consideration that it's also beyond yomtiv. So osrin means exactly what what teochel means. So why does he use this unusual how the consumption? Say it's asur muter. He says if he would have used that terminology, beis hillel is osrin and beis sham is matirin. Hoyisi omer shem mashem matirin habei hainu letalte. Hear this? I would think maybe it's only permitted to carry. Not to eat. Okay. Just the other way. Avo bachila suro. Maybe for certain things it's going to be permitted for, for eating not. Vochamin and gabi nochri echo chehevi dogim. If they were gamlil, the mercies later, a non Jew brought fish from Lil from out of the tchum. Sorry, out of the tchum. Oma mutarim heim. So Ram Lil said when the guy brought him the gift of the fish, he says they're permitted. El shein ritzoni le kabali menu. But I don't want, because it's something, it'll be misunderstood if I. Yeah. No, if I take it from right. it, Umasik, and the Gemara concludes over there. My mutarim, when Ramlil says it's permitted, mutarim letaltem only to transport. Avo avo asurin. So you see, we can differentiate between cat moving it and, and eating it. So if it would said matirin, I'd say matir only means letaltem. Then Toman lebe shelel dami lo seochel avo letaltem shori. According to Hillel, it seems to be he says lo seochel, but. To carrying you permitted, and we hold la as the Morris says later. The egg that's laid in Yom Tif, not only you're not permitted to eat, you're not permitted to carry it. So it comes out the word losi ochel is misleading. Losi ochel, I would think, means to eat not, but to carry maybe you could carry. But factually, the Morris says later, you're not permitted to carry it. You know why it says achilo? Because what is an egg normally used for? For consumption, for eating. Therefore, Shammai, and they still use the term in terms of what its specific usage is. Achilo, Od Yishlomar, another pshat. The Nokat Be Shammai Teochil Mishum Demash Achilo Betiltu. Yeah? Achilo includes transporting. If you eat something, you have to pick it up, right? You pick it up to eat. So it's two things. It tells you you're permitted to move it, and you're permitted to eat it, right? Betiltu, why? How do you eat something unless you pick it up, right? Right? Meaning, really, Hillel could have said Osrin. Osrin means it's not permitted, which, which is all inclusive. But they only use the same terminology as Beishamai. Okay? Because Beishamai, by saying Teochel, it's telling me two things. Firstly, you're permitted to move it. And to eat it. Okay, we'll start the mission over again.
field, okay? Beishnol de Biyomtev. Okay, the Mishnah. The Megdets de Biyomtev, Beishamay Osh Omrim Teochil. You're permitted to eat it. Beishil de Omrim Lo Seochil. You're not permitted to eat it. Beishamay Omrim Sor Bechzai is Chomitz Bechsevis. The Torah says you're not permitted to possess Chomitz on Pesach, right? If you possess Chomitz on Pesach, what are you in violation of? Bal Yuram Bal Yimotze. You're not permitted to possess it. So, how much Chomitz do you have to possess to be in violation of Bal Yuram Bal Yimotze? So, Beishamay says, if it's yeast, which has the ability to cause other things to become leavened, even if it's as little as a kazayas, that's, that's a sufficient volume being violated by your body, you But chomets, which you can make other, let's say a piece of bread, which you can, it does, wouldn't of cause other things to come leavened, but in itself is chomets, which means it's not as intense, then you need a larger shear to be in violation. You need something, the volume of a date, a large date. So therefore, sor bechzayas, chomets bechzayas, Chomets is the larger shir. Ksevis is the large, large date. Beisil omrim, beisil og, zevis of bechzayis. It doesn't make a difference whether it's yeast or it's edible chomets. Either one, it's the lesser amount. You're in violation of your own value motze. Hashochi chayvof biyomtiv. For one slaughters an undomesticated kosher species or a kosher bird on yomtiv. So you have a chiyuv, you have an ablation of kisi adam. You have to cover its blood. Beishame omrim, yachvi v'dek v'yichasem. You're permitted to take, a, if you have a spade in the pile of earth, you're permitted to take the spade and take the earth and cover the blood, even though when you take taking it out, you're creating it like a semi-hole. It's a question of binyan, which Mars and discuss. You do it anyway. You're not even permitted to slaughter. Unless he prepared earth from before Yom Tif, which was which is not mukta, which is right. not mukta, we don't even allow you to slaughter. However, they concur with the Shamay Shim Shochat. If, if he already slaughtered, he slaughtered he then, he then, then the spade that's stuck into the earth, he's permitted to take that spade out with the earth, cover the blood. Also, <coughs> the ash in the kira in the oven, that's considered muchan, that's not muk, so you can use that ash mm -hmm. to cover the blood. Okay? That's the Mishnah. Would Shammai allow you to dig the hole to use the dirt? Well, speaking about Bishamis, it's all speak only when you had the spade in the dirt. dirt. Pile of dirt. And a spade in it. Right. <coughs> so he would not. Let no, you, you can't. Take a if hole. you're literally digging a hole. Yeah. Okay. Gemara. Now, you have two types of chickens, right? You have a chicken which is designated for eating. Right. And you have a chicken that's designated right. for laying eggs. One's called Tarnagolas or Medis Lachilo. The hen which is is designated for eating or Targos or Medes Legatl Beitzi. It's designated just for laying eggs. So the, the chicken that's designated for laying eggs, what is the chicken? It's not a food item. No. It's classification, it's not food. It's like an egg machine. The egg, the animal, the, the, the bird is designated for laying eggs. Right? Wait. So, but what about if you have a bird that's designated for eating? So the it, so you permitted to slaughter on Yom Tif, right? Pre Yom Tif, he was designated to be slaughtered for eating. You want to take that bird, that chicken, and slaughter it? You can slaughter it. Let's say you find an egg inside the chicken. What is the egg in the chicken? In the hen? It's part of the hen. You, could you eat the intestines of the chicken? You could eat any part of the chicken. So the egg is part of the chicken. So let's say now the egg is laid. So if the egg was part of the chicken before Yom Tif, and the chicken itself is not mukta because it was pre-designated, pre-designated the chicken in its entirety. The outer part of the chicken, the inner part of the chicken. So if the inner part of the the egg is part of the inner part of the chicken, and you're permitted to eat the chicken, if they still agree you can eat the chicken, why can't you eat the egg? The egg is, is part of the chicken. That's going to be the worst question. If we're talking about Tanagol Semenis Lachilo, that it was designated for eating, what does Basil say? Lo say ochil, that you're not permitted to eat the, the egg the more first is uchl de efres. It's food that broke off. It's like food item that broke off the chicken. Okay, let's see the more. Ma'is kinam. What kind, what are we speaking about? I have to make a call. Take two seconds.
What are we speaking about? I mean, what kind of chicken are we speaking about? You see the Gemara. Eleg betargos or medis lachilo. If it's a, a hen that was designated for eating, so the hen itself, the chicken's not mukta, correct? Right. You're permitted to slaughter it. So my time here to be So how do we understand be that he says the egg that's laid from this chicken, you're not permitted to eat. Why? Uchla de efrisu. It's like food that broke off the chicken. If the entire chicken itself was pre-designated, and you permitted to eat every part of the chicken, sure. so the chicken is no d- different than the drumstick, right? The egg is no different than the drumstick. So if the drumstick would break off, right, you're permitted the drumstick, so why can't you eat the egg? The egg is part of the chicken. So what must be said? Elo, Elo is a retraction. You must say, we can't even consider it that it's a... Tanagosa medes lachilo. Elo betanagosa medes lagadol beitzim. It's a a chicken that was designated for laying eggs. So what's the status of the chicken? The chicken you couldn't slaughter on. You're not permitted to slaughter the chicken on, on Yom Tif, right? Because it wasn't pre-designated. It's not a food item. So if that's the case, my time to be Shammai. Why does Shammai say you're permitted to what? So if the egg is part of the chicken, and the chicken is mukta, so if the chicken's mukta, the egg's also mukta. So why does Shammai say that you're permitted to eat the egg? Mukta, the egg is mukta. Right now the Gemara understands Everybody accepts the principle of mukta. If it wasn't pre-designated as a food item, it should be off limits. So if the chicken itself is not permitted because it's designated as, uh, as a head and laying chicken, so therefore as the chicken itself, you're not permitted to slaughter on Yom Tif. And So the egg is no different than the chicken itself. It should not be permitted. So Mars is my kosher. What kind of question is that? What kind of question is going to be Shammai that if it's, a, if it's a hen that's designated for laying eggs, it should be mukta Maybe Beishamai rejects the whole concept of Muktza. That something doesn't have to pre- be predestinated for Yom Tif to be able to use it. Meaning, as long as theoretically it could be used, meaning, what causes something Muktza? If something is negated, negated, that's when it's Muktza. Or something, if its physicality is not, it's not physically edible. And you can't make it edible, Right? Then it's book, but physically the chicken's edible. It's purely what a designation issue. So as long as it wasn't negated that it's not a food item, so what are you asking? According to me, Shammai, if the chicken was designated for laying eggs, as the chicken's mukta, so the eggs mukta. So. Who, who said maybe if a person changes his mind in Yomtiv and he wants to slaughter the chicken, he's permitted to slaughter the chicken, right? It doesn't have to be pre-designated before Yomtiv. Maybe Bishamah less than mukta. He rejects the whole concept of mukta. So the Gemara says, Kol Saik Salka Daitan, because the Gemara is of the opinion. Now, after the man Desharni Mukta, even the one who, who permits Mukta, listen to this, Beno Let I mean, the, check, the chicken itself was designated for laying eggs, okay? Mm-hmm. Beishami would hold, on Yom Tif, he wants, has a change of mind, he wants to eat slaughtered, he could slaughter it. Why? Because anything which is theoretically could be available, he has that in mind, if I should change my mind, I want to use it. But th- what he has in mind is something that existed. The chicken. The egg has, he doesn't even know the chicken, the egg exists. Right. The egg doesn't exist. That's no lot. It, c- it came in- into being. So maybe that kind of, see, something that exists, you say in the back of his mind, if I should need it, I'll use it. But could, you can't apply that to the egg because he's not even aware where the, where the egg exists. So therefore, it's more extreme. So it's not, it's lacking in designation. It's lacking, he doesn't even know it exists, so maybe there, Beishami would be in agreement mm-hmm. that what? That it should be Muktzah. So that's the question. Even if Beishami doesn't know the Muktzah, that's in regard to the chicken. Right. But in regard to the egg, he should concur with Beishilel that it should not be permitted because it's no lad. It's something which hasn't been born. So the, even Beishami should agree that that should be considered Muktzah. He says, Koso Gadaiton, I would have thought, I feel the even the one who permits mukta bin no lad osar. If it's no lad, it's something which comes into being. No lad means born. It should be osar. So, my tummy to be shamai. So, how do we understand be shamai? What does be shamai say? The egg that's laid on yomtif, you're permitted to eat it. So, now we're holding be is the easy one. Just as you can't eat the chicken, you can't eat the, the egg. But according to be shamai, even if he rejects the concept of mukta, He's only rejecting it because he's of the opinion that theoretically anything which could be available, he doesn't negate, but that's the chicken. But the egg, he can't, he can't apply that tomorrow because the egg, he's not even aware the egg exists. 
Okay, let's read Rashi. Oh, Meris Lachilo, the more one says, what kind of chicken are we speaking about? If it's a chicken which was designated for eating, She'eno Muktzis, right? He never, he never negated it for eating. So if that's the case, Uchel de Ifris, the egg is, is part, Ochel Shenifrad. If the egg is like a food that separated itself from the chicken, Nifrad means separated. The Chavero, where do we find something similar? When foods are, let's say you have food as together, you see it as separate parts. It's like particles. So Mar says, Bishamai doesn't know the Muktzah. What's the question? What are you asking Bishamai? How are you permitted to eat the egg? He doesn't know the Muktzah. The Dilma, Kareb Shimon's relay. It's a Machlok's Tanoim where the old Reb Shimon doesn't know the Muktzah, but Rebuda holds the Muktzah. We'll see in a moment. Maybe Bishamai concurs with Reb Shimon. The Oma Beperakiro, Moses Shemin Shabinir, Shabakara Osur, Divri Reb Yehuda, Reb Shimin Matir. Let's talk. Person lights a candle, Arab Shabbos. The oil that's in the burning candle, while it's burning, are you permitted to take the oil out of the candle? Why, why, why do you say no? It, so the Gemara says if you take the oil out of that candle while it's burning, you're in violation of extinguishing. Why? Even though the flame doesn't go out? Because somehow when you short you no 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 not because you short when you take it out, there's a dimming process. You're affecting the intensity of that flame at that moment. So therefore that's considered extinguishing. Not because it's gonna that's called groma. That's causality. It's not gonna burn as long as it's meant to burn. At the time that you take it out, there's an effect to the flame. So you're in violation of extinguishing. Okay, it, diminishes it. it diminishes the flame. And that diminishment is due to extinguishing. Okay? So everybody agrees, when, Yom Tiv, when Shabbos began, that oil was off limits. But it was meant that when it burns out, there's always a residue of oil, always a residue of oil left. The question is, that oil that's left in that receptacle, if I want to use that oil for, uh, for a salad dressing, is a mukta. Reb Shimon says, it's not mukta. Reb Yehuda says, it is mukta. Reb Yehuda is of the opinion that anything which you cannot use at the entry part, point of Shabbos, it's called Kevin Iskatsoi Ben Hashemoshos. Anything which is off limits Ben Hashemoshos <coughs> and the entry point, it's Muktzah for the duration of Shabbos. That's Rebbe Dura. Rebbe Shimon says no. Even though when Shabbos began, it was off limits, but since he knows ultimately it will become available, because ultimately we're not talking about a 24 hour candle, we're talking about a 5 hour candle. So, 5 hours this candle is out, the light's out, and it's inevitable that you can have oil in that receptacle. He had his mind on the oil. That if he wants to use it, he should be able to use it. So what do we see? So we find Rib Shimon is more lenient than Rebuda. Rib Shimon says it's permitted. The residue of oil that's left in the receptacle is mutter. Rebuda says not mutter. So what's the machlokas? The Gemara says Rib Shimon is of the opinion of mukta. Since initially it was off limits, it remains off limits. Rib Shimon says no. Initially it was off limits, but since ultimately he knows it will be available, he doesn't negate something that's available. So Rib Shimon is the more lenient opinion. So Gemara is saying now. Maybe Bishamai concurs with, with Reb Shimon. The, even though initially the hen is, it was, was designated for laying eggs, but he could always change his mind. The, in, in actuality, the, the hen could be used for slaughtering. So maybe Bishamai holds like Reb Shimon. So Morris says, Do you know why the question is the question of Bishamai? Initially, we're asking, My time to Bishamai, to go so good, I feel the Reb Shimon, the Shari Mukta. Even Reb Shimon who permits Mukta, the Nolad Osir. If it's Nolad, if it's something that doesn't exist, he's unaware that even it exists. Even Meshamai would agree it's not. Even Reb Shimon would agree it's not permitted, right? Because we're saying maybe he holds like Reb Shimon, but what's Reb Shimon's oil that is there and which will become available? So he's aware of everything. Good. So the chicken, although it's designated for laying eggs, you could use. if he would want to change his mind, according to Reb Shimon, you could use the chicken. But the egg, which he's unaware it even exists, even Reb Shimon would agree that's Muktzah. Because the after some level of designation, mental designation, it's going to be. So how do we understand Be'i Shammai? That's the first question. Dilu b'Muktzah, Svirle, lo Maktzi, Inish. This is very important. Reb Shimon's opinion regarding Muktzah, lo Maktzi, Inish, Daite, Miad, Midi, Dichozile. Person doesn't negate anything which theoretically could be available to him. So the chicken... Is it out of his mind that it won't be used for slaughtering? You never know. He gets an extra guest, he may need it. Even though presently it was designated for laying eggs. 
Avil nolad. But the egg that's laid, lavi yoda than the heavy dati alu. He didn't even know he was supposed to think about it because he didn't even know it existed. So if that's the case, maybe. So how do we understand Beis Shammai? We, there's no such opinion who holds. Even Reb Shimon holds it's not permitted. So what's the basis for Beis Shammai's opinion that the egg is permitted? That's the Mars' question. You have a question? It just what happened, it seems like the logic is the same though, because if he has, this is a chicken that produces an egg every day. And he, and he but he's not. It doesn't necessarily produce it every day. So You're, frequently, every other day. Doesn't. But you have to have in mind what what exists. It has to be more what exists. What exists now, I have in mind if I want to use it. Even though now I don't, I have in mind if it should come about, I want to use it. The if is only if it's a reality that you know it exists. The egg itself, you don't know whether it exists. So even if you're expecting to read an expectation, it's not, it doesn't it's not enough. It has to be a reality of existence, like the oil, like the chicken. These are realities of existence. Okay? <coughs> very interesting because and this needs clarification we said Mar said if it would be a, would have been a, a hen which was designated for eating the Mar said we don't understand Basila because the egg is like part of the chicken right so why should so we're talking about a, a, a hen that's designated for laying eggs so Mar says how do we understand Beishamai what do you mean if I want to change my mind on, on the chicken I should be able to you, you could so if the, we see the egg before it's laid is the equivalent of the chicken. So if I, have my, so if I didn't negate the chicken from my mind, so I didn't negate the egg either. Right? We see it one and the same. So how do we, how do we differentiate? Do you hear my question? According to Beis if it was designated for eating, we see the egg, the Gemara says, the egg cannot be muktzah. Why? Because, no, not because it's, because it's part of the chicken. It's like a piece of the chicken broke off. If I could eat the chicken, means the chicken, every, it's like the intestines. I mean, permitted to eat right. intestines. It's right. all part of the chicken. Right. So the egg separated from the chicken. Right. And yet, when Bishami say, even though you could eat the chicken, because the chicken's not negated, but the egg, he didn't know it was so what, but, but, he, but he has in mind, if he should want the chicken, he could eat, eat it. So the egg is part of the chicken. So how do, how do we differentiate? It needs some refinement. So I think this is the difference. If actually the chicken itself is designated for eating, that means this entity and whatever's in it, I have a mind I want to eat. Right. Right? Okay. So therefore, the Mars did not to be Paisila. Wait. So the Mars says, if that's the case, if the egg's laid, you should be able to eat the egg or Paisila if the chicken was designated for eating. According to, if it was designated for laying eggs, why is it not Muktza? Why is it not Muktza? Not because he had in mind, I want this to be the food item. Because it was never negated. Right. What was never negated? The, the, the chicken. Right. The to be mukta, you need a negative. You need a negation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's neutral. But that I have in mind the chicken and everything. It's in the chicken I want to eat. You didn't have that in mind. <coughs> so there, as a result of that, the chicken has been negated. So what exists was negated. But what about the egg? We're not saying the chicken is a food item. But to be Mozart, you need a negation. Right. But you need something positive. Corny Basilel, you had a positive in intent. So when I had in mind, I want the chicken as food, that positive intent affects even what's inside the chicken, Good. even the egg. Good. Here, Corny Basilel was saying, if you, don't, you don't need any, any positive intent, as long as you don't have a negative intent. So if that's the case, look as the chicken is one entity and the egg is a separate entity. So if that's the case, it should be no lot. That's the Morris question. Okay? So we're saying now, we want to say, Beis Hillel, why can't you eat the egg? Because Beis Hillel holds like Rabbi Yehuda, of Muktza. He holds a Muktza. And Beis Shammai holds like Rabbi Shimon. Okay? So Mars is like this. How could you tell me now the reason Beis Hillel holds you're not permitted to eat the egg? Is because he's more machmer got to muktzah because he holds like Rabbi Yehuda, and Beis Shammai holds like Rabbi Shimon, which is the more lenient opinion, right? Hotenan, we learned in the Mishnah. It's Mishnah at the end of Shabbos. Let's say you have a table, you finish eating a meal, and you have bones which are inedible; they're not even fit for dog consumption. Right. So what is it? It's like garbage, and you have peels that are not edible to give to an animal. 
So they're mukta. What's lying on the table is mukta. Now, how do you clear the table? Are you permitted to engage directly with the peels and the shells and all that to remove it? Okay, we'll discuss in a minute. It's so, okay. So, so the Tanakhama holds, you're permitted to directly remove from the table the bones and the, and the peels. And the peels. Basil Omrim, Basil says, no, you're not permitted. Mesalik is a tavla minaro. You lift, lift, you lift up the tabletop and you just shake it off. To, to, but to engage directly with the mukta, you're not permitted. It's like indirect. Indirectly, you're removing the mukta. One second. So he says, so now Rav Nachman, Omer Rav Nachman, Onu in Lono El Beishamik Reb Yudo. This mission, he says, Beishamai falls busy Reb Yudo. What does that mean? That if Reb Yudo holds a mukta. So since the bones themselves are not fit for, for, to give to a dog, and the peels are not fit to give to an animal, therefore, that's the reason Shammai says, you're not permitted to engage with it. You take the table to- top and shake it off. It'd be Silk Reb Shimin. Why does he hold that you permit it? Because he holds like Reb Shimin, that what? That since it has been negated, it's not Muktzah. Okay? The answer has not been negated. Has not been negated. Second. Let's see Rashi. Magbiyan. Umi Omer Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman is the one. Oh, I, I, we, I, we skipped, we skipped, we skipped, we skipped. Omer Rav Nachman. So we want, we try, we, you know, Omer Rav Nachman, Targol Sabes Lagad Abayim. We're speaking about a hen that was designated for laying eggs. Ud Islay Mukta, Islay Nolad. The one who is, who's of the opinion of Mukta, he, he accepts the principle of Nolad. Although it's a more extreme case of Mukta, because he doesn't even know it exists. Right? Ud Leslay Mukta, and the one who doesn't know of Mukta, which is Beishamai, Leslay Nolad. Although Nolad is a more extreme case of Mukta, because you don't even know it exists. Here. Nevertheless, we treat it like Mukta. So the one who's lenient in regard to Mukta will be lenient in regard to this. And the one who's stri- strict, which is Beisilel, will be strict in regard to how we'll pass it by, by, the, by the egg itself. That you shouldn't be able to eat it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Back here. Excuse me. Rashi says, bones that you can't gnaw on them. They're not fit for human consumption. Mm-hmm. Not considered about mukta. So what Mormon wants to say, so what does Beishamai hold? Beishamai clearly states, holds, mm-hmm. follows position of Shimon. He doesn't know the mukta. Therefore, you could directly engage with the bones and the peels, even though they're not for, for animal consumption. You're not permitted to engage directly with your hands to touch it. So what do you do? You remove the tabletop. It's considered a kli, even though it's removed. And you shake it out. That's it, but not engaged. Vomer Rav Nachman, ein lo nu elo beishamai kreb yudo, beishamai falls kreb yudo, beisil kreb shimin. We got a problem here. Rav Nachman says we only have kreb yudo, beishamai falls kreb yudo. Right? Okay, now. Time is over. Omrim says it's not in our. Okay. Okay. 
So Rav Nachman says, Gabi Shabbos, the Sosim Tano Kreb Shimin. The Mishnah we just quoted here, right? That Mishnah is in Shabbos, which says, according to Tanakamo, you're permitted to remove the bones and the peels directly. Basil says you shake off the, the tabletop, okay? And Rav Nachman says, Eilonu Elo Beishamik Reb Yehuda Beisil Kreb Shimin. Reb Shimin, Reb Yehuda, Reb Shamik Falz Reb Yehuda is more stringent in regard to Mukto, and Beisil Falz Reb Shimin is more lenient. Omer Loch Reb Nachman Gabi Shabbos the Sosan Tano Kreb Shimin. On Shabbos, usually we say Halocha. What happens if you have an anonymous Mishnah? We say Halocha Kista Mishnah. We rule like anonymous. So if we rule like the uh, uh, anonymous Mishnah, who do you rule like? No evidence go like Beisilah. We rule like Beisilah. So if the, the halacha is like Stam Mishnah, like anonymous Mishnah, we'll follow Rip Beisilah's position. Okay? Titnan, what does it say in the Mishnah in Shabbos? Mechatran said lu lefnei behema. You have gourds, and you want to cut it up for an animal free animal consumption. Right? You permit. Meaning, even though there's a degree of exertion when you cut up these big vegetables for animals for them to eat. There's a degree of exertion. You're permitted to exert yourself for your animals, even though it's Shabbos. You would think maybe you're not permitted to exert yourself on Shabbos. Of course, it's a distress, disrespect for Shabbos. The answer is no. That you're permitted to exert yourself to feed the animals on Shabbos. That's not the veil of clovim. Let's say an animal dies right before Shabbos. So already was classified as nevelo. Now, what, what did you do with nevelo in those days? Cut it up, fed it to the dogs. There was no, there was no Jew, Jew would buy it. Okay. There's in Okay. Shimin. He says, in regard to Shabbos, Rav Nachman says, this Brice here, this Mishnah, he's attributing to Basilel. To Basilel, and Rashil holds like Rav Shimin, because there's, there's lenient here. Nevelo, when did the animal die? It didn't die. It, it, no, it, if it died before Shabbos, it's, it's not Mukta. Right. It died on Shabbos. Yeah, Shabbos so, so what if it dies on Shabbos? What does that mean? That means when Shabbos entered, the animal was alive. Right. So, yeah. so, so we should say, this Katsoi Ben Silkul Yoma. If the entry point was Muktzah because it was alive, it's like the candle burning. Reb Shimon said it would be permitted like the residue of the oil. He knows the animal's on, on the brink of death. Good. But as long as it's alive, you're not permitted to kill it, to slaughter it. But when it's dead, then you cut it. So that's what, it. what he's saying. So if that's the case, Reb Nachman said the mission in Shabbos. That it says you're permitted to take the, the carcass of the animal, feed it to dogs. He establishes that Mishnah is going like Basilel. Because Basilel, what? Doesn't hold the Mukta. Now, but if that's the case, we have a steer. So, what about over here in, in regarding Yom Tiv? Avol. Gabi Yom Tiv. The Sosmul and Tanak Rebuda. Ditnan. In Mavakin Eitzim in Akoros. It says if you have building supplies, you have building supplies, and you want to ch ch use those building supplies for firewood, and you want to chop the wood on Yom Tif, you're not permitted. No, 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 we'll see in a moment. We'll see why. Second. You had a beam, a supporting beam, a broken Yom Tif. So you're not permitted to want to use that for firewood. The answer is it's going like Rebuda. And Mukim Lo Basil Kribuda. Yeah. Mikti. So it was like this, was like this. Regarding Yamtiv, we find that Rebuda Nosi wrote the, this, the anonymous opinion like Reb like Reb Yehuda on Yom Tif. Right. Right. As a result of that, that means Reb, Reb Yehuda Nosi is Pascha on Yom Tif like Reb Yehuda Mukta. So if that's the case, the egg that's laid on Yom Tif is Mukta. Regarding Shabbos, that he says you're permitted to use the chopped wood from these beams that weren't designated for firewood, Shimon. that's it's going like Reb Shimon. So we have a stira, we have a contradiction. Is, is he following Reb Shimon? He's following Reb Yehuda. So we're saying, in regard to Shabbos, he's following Reb Shimon, which is lenient. lenient. And regarding Yomtiv, which is lenient, he's ruling like Reb Yehuda, which is, which is Machman, which is stringent. Like, what's the rationale? Okay? So he says, the Yomtiv Mukalok, Basilok, and Reb Yehuda, why? Mich, the man, stomach, the man, he said, who's the one who established the Mishnah anonymously? Rebbe. Rebbe Danosi. Rebbe is Rebbe Danosi, Rebbe Noakodesh. Maishno, Bishabi, is the Sosom, Kareb Shimin. 
Or my should be yomti the sasak of yudah. Mar is asking why, right? It's not that question. Why? How could you, you could do it? Push it. Why can't you do it? You have two different views of it. Unless there's a reason to differentiate between Shabbos and Yom Tif, that's what he's going to say. Because Review himself doesn't differentiate. Review says Mukta is Shabbos, Mukta is Yom Tif. But Shama Rav Shimon says neither. But Review he pick he pick he pick and chose here. He chose and picked Yom Tif. We rule like Rav Yudah. and on Shabbos we rule like Rav Yudah, which is lenient, more lenient. So on Yom Tif, if you have a residue of oil in a candle on Yom Tif, a Shabbos, according to Rav Yudah, according to Rav Shimon, you're permitted to eat it. Okay? She says, Right? Why? When regard to Yom Tevi Zuma like Rabbi Yudah, Amri. Okay? Amri. Shabbos the Chamir of Lozi is Zulibo. Hear this? Shabbos, which is so strict, people would not come to desecrate it easily. Because it's so strict. Sasnu Rabbi Yudah, the Chamiro, Yeah. Lo osil zuzuleg. Yeah. Sosim lo kerib lon kerib shimin. The mekel yomtiv. The kill. Second. Okay. Again. Michti mansas masis rebi. Maish the shabbis the sosim kerib shimin. Maish the yom the sosim kerib yuda. Amri shabbis the chamiro. Shabbos carries the death penalty, correct? Right. So it's so homer, a person's not going to in any way allow okay. himself to desecrate it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I could afford to be lenient. I could afford to be lenient because okay. the person's not going to take any liberties to more, be more lenient. But Yom Tif, that it's almost like, you're, like a weekday. You're allowed to cook. You're allowed to transport. So if I give a person any more leniency, mm -hmm. he's going to turn the day into a weekday. Right. So therefore, I'm machmir. So, so we're laying like this. In principle, we have followed Rip Shimon. We don't hold the mukta. But we have to rein in on the person on Yom Tif because if you give him too much, too much liberty, he's going to act, actually desecrate the Yom Tif. Right. He won't abide even by the laws which apply to the Yom Tif. Okay? Shabbos de Chamiro, Shabbos which is Chome, which is stringent, therefore law is a Zulibo. He's not come to be Mizal the Yom Tif, the Shabbos. Sosim Kareb Shimin, the Mekil, who doesn't hold the Mukta. Okay? Yom Tif to kill, but Yom Tif, which is lenient, you're permitted to cook and you're permitted to bake and transport. Vlasi, and therefore, there's a greater likelihood a person is going to desecrate it. because he's going to take certain liberties. So, some kind of we can't afford to be lenient with regard to Mukta. So, he wrote, he established the anonymous mission like Rabbi Yudah, the Machmir. And therefore, Yom Tif, with Machmir, and therefore, he still says, Lo Yom, Lo Seochil. The egg that's laid on Yom Tif, you can't eat. What about the egg that's laid on Shabbos? You, according to you, should eat it. But the Morris is asking the question. We don't. Why? So Morris says because it's a gzera. Because if you, the people are going to say, that if you could eat the egg on, 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 on Shabbos, I they're going to end up... Right. We'll, we'll see. The Morris is the question. Let's take, a, let's take a look in Rashi. We quoted the mission. It says, you're permitted to cut gourds before the animal. And an uh, animal that dies on Yom Tif, on Shabbos, you're permitted to feed it to the dogs. So what is that? That's Lingen. That's Rib Shimon. Let's see Rashi. Mechatlin Tluid Tlushin. He had cut gourds. They were picked before Yom Tif. They are Beimo. V'lo amina tichod lav tzaruch. We don't say it's an inconvenience, which is not. It's a necessary inconvenience. There's an effort. There's an avail of neklovim. V'afal pish and islav lo bi Yom Tif. Bi Shabbos bein ashmosh. It's lo hoiso meres lachilus klovim. Although the animal died on Yom Tif, on Shabbos. Shabbos. That means when Yom Shabbos began, it wasn't yet, no, it wasn't yet fit for right. animal consumption. Afilu hochi shori lon. Nevertheless, it's permitted to feed that carcass to the dogs. The lastly, muktza bi Shabbos, because Rabbi Yudha Nasi rules, muktza doesn't apply to Shabbos. Hilkoch ma'bin ma'lashulchon. Therefore, you're permitted to take the bones and what, and the shells off the table. The ma'ir bi Shabbos. Mukim lo le beisila the name of Reb Shimon. So on Shabbos, Reb Yudah Nasi established that beisila follows the position Reb Shimon who doesn't hold the mukta. And as the more explained, since Shabbos is so machmi, so chomir, so we're not concerned a person has taken any liberties. Ki heich lo tikshi hil sahil so. Otherwise, I have a contradiction. The kaimel on halok is not mishnah. We rule we rule like an anonymous mishnah. The kaimel on halok of beisila we rule like beisila. Otherwise, how do we reconcile? If we're saying in our Mishnah, 
Lo seochel means because we're following Reb Yehuda. How does he rule in Shabbos like Reb Shimon? The answer is Avagav okay. Yom Div. The Ashkel the Sosim Rebbe Kar Yehuda. The answer is I find Reb two Mishnayos. Shabbos Reb Yehuda established it non Mishnah like Reb Shimon. Yom Div like Reb Yehuda. How do we reconcile it? And that we said did not. What's the case? What's the case of of of, of Yom Div that he follows Reb Yehuda? It says Eim Bevakin Eitzim. You have you have uh, building supplies, and now you want to chop that wood and use it for fire. You have beams stacked one on the other, which clearly says it was designated for building. See, there's no proof in the first one. The first one, that's because that's called What say something's designated and negated for anything else because of its value? If, if I set aside things for building supplies, that means I don't want to use it for anything else but that. But what about if you have a beam that breaks on Yomtev? That, it's garbage. Right. right, you're going to discard it. Even that, he says, you can't use that beam for burning, you for fuel. No, evident, because of muktzah. Right. And that's not muktzah, mach, sorry, kiss. Right. Even though it's value now is only 50 for kindling wood, he still says you're not allowed. Why? Hold, ben ashmosh, ben ashmosh, ben ashmosh, ben ashmosh, ben ashmosh, ben ashmosh, because at the entry point of Yom Tiv, it wasn't meant for that. It was a regular beam. It broke on Yom Tiv. But since it was off limits, why was it? Because you, you couldn't dismantle the house. It's got soil for the duration of Yom Tiv. It's not permitted. So we see Rabbi Yudan Nossi rules that we follow the most stringent opinion on Yom Tiv. Hilkach Mukel Rav Nachum Mas Nisan Nari Bi Yom Tiv. So the mission is being Yom Tiv. Who be sil like Rabbi Yehuda? On Yom Tiv we rule like Rabbi Yehuda. Me sil falls because Rabbi Yehuda. Ubo Medes Legadol Beim. And it's thinking about a hen that's a chicken laying hen. So therefore Mishum Muktza. Man Sosim on the Mas Nisan. Who's the one who compiled the Mishnah and wrote the Mishnah synonymously? Rabbi, Rabbi who see there Hamishnah Shorodi. Now this is very important. If every opinion in the Mishnah has a, a name behind it, right. <coughs> one review that knows you identify the name, the person. What do we have in anonymous Mishnah? Anonymous Mishnah has a name. So you should, why doesn't he identify who the person is? You found the question. But why? Because sometimes, normally, if you have a minority opinion and a majority opinion, you always follow the majority opinion. But at times, where the minority opinion is the correct opinion, the majority is not. So if review that knows you will set the Mishnah majority minority. People rule themselves and say, well, minority versus majority, follow majority, but it may be incorrect. Because in this, this may be the exception where the minority opinion is more correct than the majority opinion. So how does he avoid the whole thing? He writes it anonymously. That you think that the position he's writing is a majority opinion, although it's a minority opinion. Mm -hmm. He's concealing the fact. Otherwise, people, they get all, they'll get all co uh, complicated. That's Rashi over here. Reviewed, reviewed, reviewed the Nazis best and evaluated it. And, he, and he saw that it was more correct. He says, Mad Sosim Tanamas, he said, Rebbe, you see there a Mishnah. Listen, Ukshiro Divrei Chochom, when he saw the position of a Chochom, the Yoshru Beinov, and he saw it was proper and appropriate in his eyes, Shonot Stam, he recorded it anonymously, Velo Hiski Shem Omro, Alein. He did not identify the name of the one who said it. Because he doesn't want it to be stated in, in the name of an individual, a minority. And he, re he recorded it in a way announced that it, it appears as if it's the majority opinion, rather than the minority opinion. And as a result of that, people are going to follow it. Because they're, they're under the impression it's a majority opinion, not a minority opinion. So it says, so why do we rule on Shabbos like the, like the Reb Shimon, who's more lenient? Because Shabbos is chamiro, although also it's a lezulibo. Even if you give a leniency, one leniency, people will not be lenient more than that. It will only be to the degree that we allow them. However, Yom Tif, which is, which is, which is kakal, which is lenient, if we give you more leniency, he says, come to, he'll, he'll desecrate the whole day. Therefore, Rabbi Yudah Nasi ruled like Rabbi Yudah on Yom Tiv. Therefore, Be'eshen ol de Yom Tiv, lo se'ochil. You should not eat it. So, in principle, who do we hold like? We hold like Rabbi Shimon. In principle, we should really rule like Rabbi Shimon. Like we rule on Shabbos. 
except we can't afford to follow it for Yom Tif because it's going to get out of hand. But in Svaro, Rav Shimon is the correct opinion. But we've we got to rein in on people. We don't rein in on them. They're going off the edge. Like Rabbi Yehuda. Okay? Good. One second. So now, getting back. So what kind of chicken are we speaking about according to this? It can't be speaking about a hand that's for eating. Right. Because it has no relevance to Muktz, as Dugmara said. Why? Because the egg is, is part of the chicken. Right. So we're speaking about it's a, uh, it's a chicken machine that produces eggs. Right. The a chicken itself is what? The hand itself is Muktz. Right. The question is now the egg that's laid from it. Is it Muktz or not? Right? So we said it is Muktz. If you Now, Bemayu Kimto... In what case did we establish the Mishnah? Betar and Golsim, Menes Legal Beitzim. It's a hen that lays eggs. Umishum Muktzah. And why are you not permitting to eat the egg? Because of Muktzah. The more now we ask a phenomenal question. So if the issue is the whole like Rabshim, the whole Rabbi Yehuda, what do we talk about there? Let's talk about the chicken. person has a chicken that was designated for laying eggs. Good. And now he has to change your mind on your umptive. Are you permitted to slaughter it? Good. It should say, Bishamah says yes, Basil says no. So no, what do we have to talk about the egg? Sure. <coughs> Let's talk about the hen. That's the most question. Right? Well, why did he have to argue the egg? Let them argue the, the, the chicken itself. Are you permitted to slaughter a chicken on Yom Tif that originally was designated for laying eggs? Beishamah says yes, because he follows the position of Reb Shimon. Hillel says no, because he follows the position of Reb Yudah. Of Muktzah. So Mara says, now, even though we said the one who doesn't know the Muktzah doesn't know the Nolad, but nevertheless, but it's a Chidush. Right? It's a novel thing. You say, maybe only to this point, not to that point. We say, no, it's across the board. You don't hold of it, you hold of nothing. You hold of it, even the lesser degree. Okay? So the Gemara is going to say, so the Gemara is going to say, Lodir Kolcha de Beishamai. The Menola Chari. It's, it's, it establishes the case about the egg because it's a greater chidush. Because we want to show you the power of the one who rules leniently. Not only does he permit the chicken, right. even the egg that's a more extreme level of muktzah, even that he permits. Mm -hmm. It brings out another aspect of muktzah. If they only argue the, the chicken, what is that? The chicken's here. Did he have it in mind? Did he not have it in mind? But the egg, which he wasn't even aware that it existed, even that he permits. So because the egg is a greater chidush, then the hen, that's where Yudan Nasi established the machlokas by the egg rather than by the hen. Beishnol the Biyomtev, is it permitted to eat or is it not permitted to eat? So Mar asks, the liflagu, the tanagolis, lo duch koch de beishhileo. What are you arguing about the egg to show us the leniency of beishamai? Rule in relat to the hen to show us the stringency of beishhileo, how strict they are. Lif tanagolis, the koch de beishhileo, the mukta asri, that mukta is not permitted. Maybe you'll say, you know why? This is a phenomenal principle. There's a concept known as koach de te The position of the more lenient one is a better position to present. Why? Let's say a person's an Amoritz, ignoramus, knows nothing. And, and it was, he puts up a shingle, I'm the decider of this community. Knows nothing. So how, how does he work it out? Whoever comes to ask him a shayla, it's not permitted. It's not permitted, finished. Right, playing it safe. So do you have to know, does it reveal anything special about the person's uh, uh, proficiency? Not for, it reveals nothing. But if a person can rule leniently and he has a basis for that shows greatness in Torah. So therefore, Rabbi Yudha Nasi always establishes the more lenient opinion because it reveals the power to what degree and the background of that person who is ruling leniently. To be machmir, you know, play it safe. Why is it not? But it, it doesn't mean anything. Right. It, does, it doesn't show anything. It, it, it almost have no basis in your machmir. But, here, but to be lenient, you know what it means to be lenient? That means there, there's, a, there's a rationale, there's a basis for it. So Rabbi Yudha Nasi, when he wrote the Mishnah, he only wants to, sh he wants to show you the, no the, novel, the novel understanding, and because of that you could be lenient. That's koach de terodif. The power of the more lenient one is, is preferable to establish in that context rather than put a limitation on it. Okay, we're going to stop here.
Okay, we're, we're in no rush. Tomorrow, before we go further, we're going to review everything up to this point, and then we'll do Tosis. So like this, by the time we finish, every blot will we'll cover it three, four times. Good. Very exciting. Great decision. So Rav Shimon ruled... Rav Shimon doesn't hold the Muktzah. Rav Shimon does not hold the Muktzah. He doesn't accept it all. He doesn't accept it. I mean, by certain Muktzah, by this kind of Muktzah, because he didn't think about it, he rejects that. Muktzah that, it was designated, let's say, building supplies. That's called Muktzah Machsarnkis. I'll give you a, a surgical scalpel which is only used for operating. A person doesn't use that to cut meat or to cut, cut string. That scalpel, everybody agrees you can't use for anything but that. On Shabbos or Yom Tov, either one. But the knife, but the knife's a knife, no. That knife has been designated for that and nothing else. Everything else has been negated. Even Rav Shimon agrees there. Here we're talking about is neutral, is a neutral understanding, is that sufficient? Rav Shimon says, even as long as it's not negated and it's available, it's permitted. You can do it. That, that, that's the principle of Shimon. Rav Yudu says, no. A neutral understanding is not so You have to have specifically in mind. And if you don't have specifically in mind, you cannot use it. That's, that's the Chumr of Rav Yudu. That's Rav Yudu holds of Muktzah. So if you had a, a, a hen that was designated for laying, laying eggs, unless you had in mind that I'm going to eat it, which was uh, a nullification of the nullification, 